Welcome everyone. I have lots and lots and lots of people good joining morning, us. Everyone. Welcome to good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. If you are just joining us and you would like to announce yourself, please say so in the chat window. Who are you and where are you from? We're excited to have you here and joining us for another day of Excel webinar series. Today we have Gwen McCormick from Marvin's Market Adventure, who is going to be sharing with us chapter three and chapter four, a continuation of last week's Marvin's Market Adventure, where she shared with us chapters one and two. Welcome, Gwen. Thank you for joining us. Also with us today, we have Leanne from APH. Hello, everyone. And Charlotte from Paths to Literacy. Hi, everyone. Leanne and Charlotte always do a fantastic job monitoring the chat window. So please say what you need to say, what you want to say, what you want to share in the chat window. That's always the best way to talk with us. Welcome, Tara from North Carolina. Welcome, Charlotte from California, Nova Scotia, and Nevada. Welcome Hawaii and New York, Massachusetts. Welcome Karen from Georgia. Parker, welcome back. I think we've seen you a couple times. Brian from Massachusetts. Aloha, Lisa. I miss you all from Hawaii. My Ohana is from Hawaii. Ohana is family. We had an Ohana meeting yesterday where we had celebrated my auntie's 90th birthday through Zoom. It was a fabulous Zoom party. <laughs> so welcome from Hawaii. Welcome Kimala and New Mexico. As we get started here, we just have a quick question or two for you. If you would let us know your age range and um, maybe perhaps your role. We have a little poll for you that we would always like to share. And then we will- Carol, should we say, you don't have to say your age if you're an adult. We're mostly just interested if you're an adult or what grade you're in if you're a child. I'll let that poll get started. Is it going to work for us today? I'm starting to see a few people. Oh, fabulous. Okay. Sometimes it can be a little bit temperamental, but some of you are responding in the chat window. Thank you, Zoe, for responding in the chat window. Thank you, Brian and Karen. Thank you, Susan. Oh, we have a birth to three person. We have a special session on Friday this week for birth to three. I hope you can join us. It'll be on infant massage. In well, fact, the presenter for that is on here too. So we're welcoming Kamala. So yeah. Welcome. All right, fabulous. What are we doing today? We have Gwen and she's gonna share with us the adventures of Marvin. So I'll let you take it away from here. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Hi everybody. It's Gwen again from the United Kingdom. Now then, boys and girls, do you remember the story so far of Marvin's Market Adventure and Grandma's special birthday picnic? Can you remember who this is? It's Marvin! Hi, everybody! How are you all doing over there in the United States of America? We are really pleased to see you all. This is Marvin and I am Gwyn. I'm just going to describe Marvin to you, boys and girls, so listen, in, listen really carefully. Marvin has black spiky hair, he's wearing black framed glasses, he's got a really big smile on his face, and he wears a yellow t-shirt, and he's got green shorts on as well. And he's super pleased to see you all. And I, boys and girls, at the moment, I've got a big smile on my face, and I'm also wearing glasses just like Marvin. So boys and girls, can you remember what happened in the first two chapters of Marvin's Market Adventure last week? So Marvin wanted to make a picnic for his grandma, didn't he? And do you remember boys and girls, this is grandma and she wears a red dress with yellow buttons down the front. She's got a gray hat on, she's got sparkly eyes and uh, sparkly glasses. I've just pulled her really near to the camera so you can see her. And she's got a big smile on her face. And Marvin loves his grandma very much. And he went to her house and they planted potatoes and carrots and flowers, didn't they? So Marvin wanted to make a special birthday picnic, didn't he, for his grandma. So he sat at the kitchen table and he wrote his shopping list. 
Can you remember what, can you remember what was on the shopping list? It was a fish for the pond, a flower for the garden, bread, cake and gingerbread people, a bottle of homemade lemonade, his grandma's favourite. So he set off to the market with his big shopping bag after he'd emptied his piggy bank and put his money into his purse. He took his big shopping bag and he went to see, can you remember who he went to see? Flora Flower! Remember, she had red hat on and sparkly flowers and a beautiful red apron on the front. So it was a yellow flower on the front. Flora Flower! And we did the voice, didn't we? And he met Sunny Sunflower. And she is magic. Do you remember doing all that? So boys and girls, we're going to go and see the next stall holder at the market. Now I'm going to put my head really close to the screen, to the camera. I'm just wondering if any boys and girls can see what I've got on my hat. It begins with a th. Can you remember what I was on the list? It's a fish. We're going to go and buy a fish. Mom is going to buy a fish for his grandma's birthday. But first of all, boys and girls, I'm just going to show you and describe to you some of the things that are on the stall on Fishman Phil's stall. Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to stand up so that you can see the whole of me. Put Marvin down for the middle. So that's my hat, it's a green hat. It's got a, a big brim to it and it's got two silver fish on the top of it that are smooth and shiny. And then I've got, I'm wearing a really big green jacket. It hasn't got any sleeves in it. So you can see my yellow t-shirt underneath. And on the pockets, there are four pockets. And on two of the pockets, the top pockets on the jacket, I've got smooth, shiny fish. And on the pockets at the bottom of the jacket, I've got bumpy fish, fish with bumps on. So if I put my hand across the fish, it feels bumpy. So big bumpy fish and smooth little shiny fish. Okay, boys and girls, so that's what I'm dressed like. Fishman Phil! That's what we're going to learn to do in a minute. We're going to learn to do Fishman Phil's voice. So I'm just going to bring you some objects to show you. Do you remember last week? I think I might have shown you little shiny fish. Let me just bring up my black tray so you can see it better. I just hold this in front. I'm so glary in here this afternoon. It makes it a bit difficult to see. But there's a, let me try that way. No, it's a little bit shiny. I'm, that's the best I can offer, I'm afraid. So it's a yellow and red and orange fish. It's got a big black eye and it's got a silver tail and it's got two silver fins. And this is little shiny fish. Okay, boys and girls. And then, um, I'm just going to put my tie down and bring over. This is a really, really, really big bumpy fish. It's pink and it's massive and it's got big shiny spots on it. Bring those really close so that you can see. Okay, and off the bottom of the fish, it's got long tendrils in greens and oranges. And on the back of the tail, there are green and yellow and orange circles. And on the front of the fish, it's got a really, really big mouth with really, really big white teeth and a big blue eye. It doesn't look a very happy little, uh, it doesn't look a happy big fish. Okay, and then the last one to show you is a big, well, this is a big little shiny fish. So it's bigger than the little shiny fish I've just shown you. But this is covered in shiny paper. It's pretending to be a smooth, shiny fish. So just hold it like that to try and take the glare off. Okay, boys and girls, I'm just going to show you the I just want to show you the difference in size. Okay, let's see if I can do it so you can see. So the big bumpy, bumpy fish, that's the, that's the tail of the bumpy fish and the, and the tail of the little shiny fish. And one is much bigger than the other. I hope you can all see that. Okay, I stand back perhaps as well. 
Okay, boys and girls, just one more thing to show you. I've got two boxes. I've got two boxes of fish, and they're going to, going to use these in the store in the middle. So this is the box of bumpy fish. It's a fish with bumps on, and it's and I've stuck the fish on top of the box on the box lid because in this box are lots and lots of fish and they are bumpy we've got bumpy fish we've got gems on them so that they are big bumpy fish and i've got lots of them boys and girls i've got about 10 of those and then i've also got a little box of smooth shiny fish and they again let me just hold my black tray up to show you I've got one of the bumpy fish as well. I uh, can show you that just a second. Right, here we go. Look, I've got that black tray in front. See if I can hold. That's the bumpy fish. Can't believe how glary it is in here this afternoon. And that's a little shiny fish. Hopefully, you can see the shape of them. Okay, boys and girls. So, I hope you've guessed by now that little shiny fish. A big bumpy fish appear in this next chapter of this story. Okay, so can you remember the song that me and Marvin taught you last week and the actions that we all did together? So what we'll do, we're going to do it, we're going to sing it twice. We're going to do it once with the actions and teach you the actions again in case you're new and this is the first time you've joined and then we'll sing it all the way through. Okay, so don't worry, just clap along or tap something on the table. Um, just enjoy the song. You don't have to sing along if you don't want to, but if you do, let's hear you singing across America. Okay, boys and girls, I'll count us in. I'll go one, two, three, and I'm gonna put my left arm out in front of me as far as I possibly can and wiggle my fingers, okay? So stretch your arm right out in front of you. We're gonna go. Welcome to the wonderful world of Marvin. Okay, and now I want you to bring your right arm right out in front of you. So it's next to your left arm and wiggle both fingers on both hands. Wiggle your fingers and go, he's such a character. He's so charming. And now I want you to take your left hand or your fingers on your left hand and pretend to tap your other wrist, your right wrist. Time for adventure. We'll pretend to do a thumbs up. Here we go. But Marvin won't appear, so pretend to turn your head and look round the room. Put your hand to your forehead, above your eyes, and to have a little look round the room. Marvin won't appear. And let's we give a cheer. Put your hands by your mouth and give a big cheer. And let's we give a cheer. And I want you to punch the air with your hand and go, for our hero. Yeah! Fantastic, boys and girls, okay? Are you ready? We can sing it all the way through, okay? One, two, three. Welcome to the wonderful world of Marvin. He's such a character, he's so charming. Time for adventure, here we go. But Marvin won't appear unless we give a cheer for our hero. Yeah! Hooray, boys and girls. Well done. Give yourself a clap. That was fantastic. And now, boys and girls, we've got to learn the voice of Fishman Phil. And this is how he sounds. He goes, Fishman Phil! You all do that. Fishman Phil! Okay, all together. One, two, three. Fishman Phil! Did you do it? Okay, one more. Are you ready? I'll count you in. Are you ready? One, two, three. Fish and soul! And one more. This time I want you to wiggle your arm, wiggle your hand and wiggle your arm as if it's a little fish swimming in the sea. Okay, so when you say fish man fill, I want you to wiggle your arm or wiggle your hand. Okay, are you ready? All together. One, two, three. Fish and soul! Well done, boys and girls. I'll be saying that a lot more. You'll know that so well before the story's over. Okay, then. So, Marvin and Sunny Sunflower. Oh, I'm just find Marvin. Marvin and Sunny Sunflower looked for the second thing on the list. 
it was a little fish. Suddenly, Marvin saw Fish Marcel carrying a big pile, a big pile of boxes. So boys and girls, I picked up the big bumpy fish box and I picked up the little shiny fish box and I'm pretending to carry them like Fishman Phil does. So suddenly Marvin saw Fishman Phil carrying a big pair of boxes full of fish. Hi there Fishman Phil said Marvin. Just then there was a crash, a bang and a wallop as all the boxes went in the air and fell on the floor. The fish went slipping and sliding all over the floor. So I've just moved my arms to pretend I've gone all over the floor, sliding all over the floor. Eh, said Marvin, those fish are so poggy. Can you all do that? Can you go, eh, and screw your face up? Go, eh. And then I want you to hold your nose with your finger and your thumb and go, Pongy! All together. One, two, three. Hold your nose. Pongy! Uh, said Marvin and Sunny Sunflower together. Those fish smell so fishy. Help! Can you all shout help? One, two, three. All together. Help! All the fish are muddled up, said Fishman Fool. Quickly, Marvin and Sunny Sunflower began to put their wriggly, smelly, little shiny, smooth fish back into the little box and the big, bumpy fish back into the big, bumpy fish box. So, boys and girls, just wait a minute because I've got to bend down to pick them up. Just a second. So, we got the big box and we put the big, bumpy fish back into the big, bumpy fish box. Just like this. Like that, and then we've got the little smooth shiny fish box with a little shiny fish like this one, and Marvin and Sunny Sunflower pop them into the little shiny fish box, and they did that until all the fish were back in the boxes. Phew, said Marvin, when all the fish were back in the boxes, fish man fill. Smile down at Marvin. So let me going to do a big smile. Smile down at Marvin and Sunny Sunflower and said, thank you for saving the fish. What a helpful team you two are. I will give you any fish you like for your grandma's pond. Suddenly, Marvin found something wriggling in the bottom of his Wellington booth. Ah! There's something in the booth and I don't know what it is. Uh oh, uh oh, Fishman Phil, look what's in the bottom of my boot. It was, who was it? It was Little Shiny Fish was in the bottom of Marvin's boot. Oh, Fishman Phil, Fishman Phil, please can I have this fish? Because I don't want to be greedy, said Marvin. Marvin took the little shiny fish out of his Wellington boots and Fishman Phil, Fishman Phil, put it into the plastic box. Okay, ready for Marvin to carry away. Now then Marvin, you carry this fish really, really carefully. I don't want you to spill the water from the fish. Just as Marvin was walking away from the stall, he heard a little voice say, Hi there, my name is Little Shiny Fish, and I am magic! Hey, Boys and girls, I want you to put your arms in the air, make a big, I want you to put your arms right out, left arm and right arm out and go, I am magic! All together, you ready? You all standing up? Are you ready? One, two, three. I am magic. You put your arms in the air. Little shiny fish is here. Wow, said Marvin. Wow, you really are magic. Little shiny fish said, 
I would really like to be your friend. Marvin and Sunny Sunflower looked at each other and said at once, we are so pleased to meet you, little shiny fish. We would love to be your friend. Suddenly, little shiny fish jumped out of the box, twirled round, and he started to walk alongside Marvin. I told you I was magic. I was in there, everybody. One, two, three, magic. Fantastic, he said, laughing as he was skipping alongside Marvin. Fantastic. And boys and girls, that's the end of chapter three. Fishman Soul Store. Wow, that was exciting, wasn't it? So, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that. And my lovely friend Charlotte, <clears throat> would you just mind to take over while I go and change and make oh. these? Sure. Well, so I wanted to ask, Gwen is going to put on another costume now. So while she's doing that, I wanted to ask if people know what happened to the fish. Type in the, into the chat box if you know what happened to the fish and what Fishman Phil found and what Marvin found. Anybody know? Anybody listening? Marvin felt something in the bottom of his boot. Yeah, Xian said that it was a shiny fish. Yeah, they found a fish, Ria, exactly. And Marvin had the fish down inside of his boot. Have you ever had something fall into your boot? When, sometimes, sometimes I, when I walk outside in the snow, I get some snow inside my boot. Yep, they were fishy boots. And what do you think it would be like? What would you notice if you had some dead fish around? You might be able to do what? How would you know they were there, even if you couldn't see? Yeah, Barbara wrote, ew. Yeah, it would be stinky, wouldn't it, Ryan? It would be really stinky. Have you ever smelled a stinky fish? Yeah, it's kind of disgusting sometimes, but maybe they get used to it too, right? And there were a lot of different fish that Gwen was showing us. Can anybody tell me what kind of fish they were? How did they feel? They felt bumpy. Some of them were bumpy. Yeah, and some of them were shiny. Some of them were smooth. So we had a bunch of different fish. Some of them were really big. She showed us a big pink fish. Yeah, Xian said they might feel squishy. Yep. So have you ever eaten fish? Yeah, some of you are right typing in the chat box that yes, you've eaten fish. And you know, sometimes we don't even know what fish feels like. If you just go to McDonald's or Burger King, you're gonna get a fish sandwich, but you don't know that it's maybe a, a smooth fish beforehand because it's already, already cooked. Ryan said, that uh, he had fish last night and Rhea says, no, thank you. I don't think Rhea likes fish. And Haney has eaten a fish sandwich. Yeah, there are a lot of different ways to eat fish. And sometimes um, you might have it just uh, kind of broiled, just kind of plain. Um, yeah, Monica, well, she says her daughter has not eaten fish, but loves the rainbow fish. So you might just like uh, the way that fish looks. Debbie had fish sticks. Xian likes to eat fish at college. Gabby's had salmon, that's a kind of fish. So yeah, there are lots of different types of fish. Salmon's just one of them. So cod is another kind of fish. I bet some of you have had tuna fish. A lot of times you could have a tuna fish sandwich or a tuna swordfish. <laughs> Yuck fish, that's what Zayden says. Yeah, I don't think Zayden likes fish. Xi'an likes tuna, and sometimes people have tuna fish sandwiches, like I said, sometimes you have fish at dinner. Uh, I'm trying to think of other kinds of fish. Mm, smoked okay. salmon. I was gonna say, this is Leanne, I would say grouper. Grouper, yes, that's a kind of fish. And M Millie likes fish. Xi'an has had it in a sandwich. So, yeah. But the nice thing about this story on sushi, what do you know about sushi? 
it's not cooked, right? That's raw. Catfish, says Zayden. So you all know a lot of different types of fish. Goldfish, yeah, goldfish. And sometimes you have goldfish crackers, but those aren't really fish, are they? Those are kind of cracker. Or you might have goldfish that are a kind of pet that you keep in a bowl or a tank. Oh, Haney said a guppy. Yeah, Monica said a clownfish. So I think that Gwyn is back with us now. So thanks everybody. And Zayden said a swordfish. So we talked about all kinds of fish. Gwyn, okay. please take it away. <clears throat> okay, boys and girls. Here I am again. Now then, boys and girls. At the moment, I am, I've changed my outfit and I have got a different outfit on because we're now going to go and see Veg Man Vernon. Okay, I'll say that again because it's a bit of an English name actually. Veg Man Vernon. And Veg is short for vegetable. So rather than saying vegetable man Vernon, I have shortened it to say veg man Vernon. Okay, boys and girls. So Marvin, here he is again. Look, hey everybody. He did some really, really great questions and answers with Charlotte and you guys. You're amazing. Fantastic. So boys and girls, I am now dressed like veg man Vernon. I am wearing a flat cap. So it's a cap that fits my head. It's not like a baseball cap, but it's like a flat cloth cap. They're very popular in the United Kingdom. A lot of men wear these sorts of caps rather than women. And I've got a brown apron on. I'm just going to stand up to show you my apron. <clears throat> and on the front of my apron is a letter B. And I've got some in green, shiny paper for V for Vernon. And I've got lots of strawberries all the way down my apron. So I am wondering what's happened. I wonder if that gives us a clue about what might be going to, going to happen at the store. We're going to show you some objects again, boys and girls, so that you know what's coming up in, this, in the next bit of the story, when Marvin visits Vegemon Vernon's store, and then I'll tell you the story, or tell you that chapter. Okay, so first of all, boys and girls, if you remember, Marley wants to buy some fruit and vegetables. So I've got some fruit and vegetables here. So I'm just going to hold up my little tray so you can hopefully see it and it's not too shiny. So I've got a beautiful yellow banana. There we go. It's a beautiful yellow banana. And I've got <clears throat> an orange, which is round and juicy. I hope everybody likes oranges because they're really good for you. Eat your oranges. That'll make you very healthy <clears throat> and it's round like a ball an orange and then here's an apple it's red and shiny and it's got a little black stalk at the top and apples are really good for you too and also a red tomato tomato is smaller than an apple in this case not always a tomato is smaller than apples but this one is and it's got a green little stalk at the top Okay, boys and girls, so, and that's all nice and juicy, and everything's so healthy and really, really good for you. So if you eat, if you eat all those things, you'll be really big, boys and girls, and you'll be really, really healthy. Okay, the other thing I want to show you are a box of strawberries, because I think, I've got a feeling, boys and girls, that Vegman Vernon is about to have a problem, a little problem with some strawberries. So this is my box of strawberries, and there's lots of strawberries all together in a box. Okay, they're all squished into a box, and they're red, and they're smaller than the tomato, and they've all got little green stalks. These are pretend strawberries, they're not real strawberries. Okay, boys and girls, I think that's all the main things. I think I've just forgotten my shopping, my vegetable shopping bag. Just one, <coughs> one little second. Um, what can I do with my, oh, there it is. Here we are, boys and girls. I've lost something for a minute. I found it again. Here we go. And I've got a big brown paper bag, and it's got some fruit, a picture of fruit and vegetables on. And in a minute, I'm going to pretend I'm Vegman Vernon. I'm going to open the shopping bag. I'm going to put the vegetables into the shopping bag in a minute, okay? So that's the main things for the for this part of the story. Right, okay. 
So the only thing we need to do every time we visit Vegman Vernon's, every time we visit a new store, we have to sing the song. It's the rule. So I hope you can remember it from before. We'll be so good at this, won't we, when we're finished? So let's have a go. I'm just going to sing it once. I won't do it twice. But it's important we do it every time we go to a new store. Are you ready? You're all standing up. You ready, boys and girls? And here we go. I'll count you in. One, two, three. Welcome to the wonderful world of Marvin. He's such a character. He's so charming. Time for adventure. Here we go. But Marvin won't appear unless we give a cheer for our hero. Give a big cheer, boys and girls. Hooray! Fantastic. Veg Mount Vernon. And this is how Veg Mount Vernon sounds. Are you ready to hear the voice and learn the voice? He goes like this. He stands up with his hands on his hips. So stand up and put your hands on the hip on your hips. And you go there in your deepest voice that you've got. Veg man Vernon. Ah, oh, we've got a very deep voice, boys and girls. Let's do that again. Are you ready? One, two, three. Veg man Vernon. Okay, did you do it? I hope you did. We'll do it once more. One, two, three. Veg man Vernon. Amazing. Well done, everybody. Marvin Sunny Sunflower and Little Shiny Fish looked at the third thing on the list. It said fruit and vegetables. Off they went to see Veg Man Vernon at his fruit and vegetable store. Just as they arrived at Veg Man Vernon's store, a big boy on a scooter zoomed past. He went, Meow! Can you all do that? Go, meow! And again, one, two, three, meow! A big boy ran past on a scooter and he pushed Madman Vernon over and he landed in the strawberries clunk. Uh oh. I'm covered in strawberries and I am very cross. Uh-oh. Veg Mount Vernon came up out of the strawberries and he was covered in strawberry juice uh, all over his face. Oh no, said Marvin. Are you okay, Veg Mount Vernon? Everyone shouted. He was very big and very heavy and they had to pull really hard to help Verge Man Vernon stand up. So boys and girls are going to pretend to help Verge Man Vernon to stand up. So I want you to pretend, put your arms out in front of you, clasp your hands in front of you together and pretend you're pulling Verge Man Vernon off the floor. You ready? We're going to count him up. One, two, three, heave ho, and again, heave ho, oh, Vegman Vernon was so heavy, they had to pull really hard, Vegman Vernon's face was very red and very shiny, and today his face looked even redder and even hungrier and shinier because he was covered in strawberry juice, oh no, Marvin gave Vegman Vernon a beautiful white handkerchief and Vegman Vernon mopped his face and wiped away the strawberry juice. Thank you, Marvin, said Vegman Vernon. You are a very kind and helpful little boy. Thank you to all your friends for helping me. What do you want from my stall? asked Vegman Vernon. Marvin said, it's my grandma's birthday, Vegman Vernon, and I'm making her a picnic. Oh, Vegman Vernon said, right, Marvin, what would you like from my store? Let's have a look what we can get for your lovely grandma. And Marvin looked at all the beautiful, bright, shiny fruits and vegetables, and he said, Vegman Vernon, please may I have one apple for my grandma's picnic. Of course you can, Marvin. I mean, right up in the apple, the paper bag. I've got a beautiful, juicy red apple, Marvin. Straight in the bag. Now then, Marvin, what else can I get for you? 
Where's your man now? Please can have an orange. Of course you can, Marvin. A beautiful orange. There you go. Beautiful and juicy. Your grandma will love that. Are you ready, boys and girls? I'm going to put it in the bag. In the bag it went. Now then, Marvin, what else can I get for you? Oh, fresh man, Vernon. My grandma loves bananas. Marvin, I've got the most beautiful bananas in from Jamaica. Would you like this one, Marvin? Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. In it goes. Oh, oh, oh. And what else can I get for you, Marvin? Can I have a tomato? My grandma really likes those in sandwiches. Of course, I've got a beautiful red tomato here for you, Marvin. In the bag it went. Fresh man Vernon gave Marvin a bag of vegetables and fruit and said to Marvin, you can have these for free, Marvin, because you are a very kind and helpful little boy. Oh, thank you very much, Fresh Man Vernon. My grandma will really, really enjoy these for her picnic. And off Marvin, little shiny fish, and Sunny Sun Paul went to see the next stall holder. And next week, when I'm back, I'll find out who that is. I've got two more people to go, one more person to go and see, and then we can have the picnic. So there we are, boys and girls. That's where we're up to with our story. <clears throat> so, so Charlotte, I am ready to chat again. <clears throat> Thank you, Gwen. Well, people have been loving this, and I think people are starting to learn the song, so that is wonderful. I think one thing we wanted to find out was if anybody made uh, any of the crafts that we talked about last time, too. So we were going to check with that, but a lot of people were talking about the fish before, Gwen. Yeah. And um, while you were telling this part of the story, uh, some people were telling about some of the fruits and vegetables that they like. We yeah. had uh, Zayden was eating a green apple, which he thought was kind of sour. Mm. Um, but uh, let's see if anybody else, did anybody else have fruits or vegetables so far today? Let's look in the chat box and see, see who else. Oh, Rhea had a mango. Ooh, that sounds lovely. A mango. Yeah. And juicy. Well done, Rhea, for having a mango. That's fantastic. Does <laughs> anyone else have questions for Gwen? Oh, here we have somebody had a cantaloupe. Somebody had peppers and olives. Wow. Uh, healthy. Shian would like to make a fruit smoothie. Mm. Um, somebody had strawberries. Let's see, Millie had strawberries and raspberries. What's the and like Jana Hogan poke up saying, love the video, that was fabulous. How can, look like she's going to ask. So she wants to see the previous story, so we can put the link right in there. Um, mm. Turnips, an Ooh, orange yeah. banana smoothie. Amazing, you know so many fruits and vegetables, you guys. Turnips yeah. are good for you. I was reading about turnips the other week, and they are so very, very good for you. They're very low in carbs, I think, <clears throat> that fill you up, but it's to make you feel full. Ashley had an apple, and Zoe uh, wants apples and nectarines. Wow. Rhea likes blueberries. And Gabby wants to know, how old are the children you teach, Gwen? I don't teach any children. <laughs> You used to be a teacher, though. Maybe that's what she's thinking of. Peach, we knew you were a teacher. I used to teach. Um, well, I was an advisory teacher of children with vision impairment, so I taught all ages. I would go into the schools where children were visually impaired, and I support any child from, ba from being a baby right through to being 18 years old. So I didn't have. Um, I wasn't a specialist in a certain age group. Thank you. And we've got Monica likes uh, watermelon and strawberries and Brack likes apples. So all different kinds of fruits. Yeah. Would you well, like... We... Go ahead. Sorry, so no, Karen, Charlotte, and sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Oh, that's it. I think that's it. We're all up to date. Fantastic. Well, I can show you some of the crafts that go with the fish stall and the vegetable stall if you'd like me to. We'd love that. Thank you. And while Gwen is getting those, did anybody make any of the crafts during the week? We talked about it last week, and I'd be interested to know if anybody made any of them. And you can write in the chat box if you tried making them. Do you remember what she showed us last week with Sunny Sunflower? And some people were saying they weren't here last week, so 
So we've got the video uh, recorded. You can watch it anytime you want. And Gwen's going to show us some of the things that she made. About doing a fishman fill <laughs> stalker. Monica's going to make some fish this time. Madeline's telling us she liked grapes. Brian likes broccoli. <laughs> So okay. we've got all different kinds of fruits and vegetables. This is the, the big fish I showed you before. This is really easy to make. You can just you don't have to make it as big as mine. But you can just cut out a fish shape. And these um, are the I just see old CDs that I've glued on, um, and um, then I put a, a bright colour spot in the middle. But you can make your own bumpy fish. I actually saw on Pinterest, which I'm going to make. Uh, I saw just a fish made with a CD. Um, and um, just using that and they put a little fin and a tail there. So if you want to make a big version, and then these are just shoelaces, fluorescent shoelaces that you could tie ribbons down. Um, so there are lots of fish templates on the internet that are easy to get and, and um, locate. Um, and then these are really easy things to make. I'm just getting my black, um, I'm running out of room. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Um, so much, oh, the light's better now. The light's faded here, so it's a bit easier. Uh, it's the evening in the United Kingdom. And that sun's gone down now. So this is made of a paper plate. And you just cut a V out of the side of the paper plate. And you glue the V on the back here. Uh, or sell the tape it on. And then you can put a button or a bead or a sticky shape to make the eye. Um, I've got some white card circles I use, but you don't have to have those. And then I just use scrunched up tissue paper squares, and that makes a really fab um, fish, and I've just decorated it with foam shapes. And I've just tied some gift wrap ribbon underneath um, for that one. But these are great fun and, um, <clears throat> and are inexpensive to make. You, know, you can go crazy and make loads of crazy fish. Uh, so they're so, so easy. To make and um, I'll just show you one more because I've got lots of them. This is one with um, buttons on it, nice coloured buttons and foam shapes. So uh, <coughs> then um, there's some different ones here. This I've made with pom pops, it's upside down pom poms. Uh, oh, you're upside down, no, I'm not sure which way off he goes, he'll, he'll go right that way. But these have got pom poms on and put foam shapes at the back. So they're nice and simple to make. Um, and then the other thing I made actually, um, I made, I covered a box with shiny paper and then I filled it with white tissue paper to pretend that it was ice. Just tissue paper in a box like that. It's just an Amazon box or something that came through the door. And then I made lots of cut out fish like this. But I made it into a game. <clears throat> so on one side, it's got a number, which obviously you could braille or do a print, uh, print number. On the other side, it's a letter. And um, they would sit on the fish stall, and there's lots of them. And then the children have to go and buy a fish. The one's got two and the K on the back. Um, and I just, like I say, I use foam shapes, but you can put braille. And um, so I put them on the fish market, on the fish stall. And then the children have to go and buy a fish. And then they maybe they have to go then and find three things from around the house that begin with a G. So it's a little, a little game that you can play. But when you line the fish up, they also make a number line if you like if you, if you, if you put those in a row. So it's just um, creating a little game out of going to the fish market, doing that. I also did black fish. With the shape on, and I thought, you know, in, for, for children who find that easy to just see one thing, and they could perhaps, um, you know, if you wanted to extend that, depending on the child, they could go and find something that was an oval shape, something that was a triangle shape. It's just using the um, activity beyond the, what it, it being a cardboard cutout for the stall, you know, to try and um, develop the opportunities for for learning. So those are the main things I did for the fish stall. And then for the um, vegetable stall, uh, these are really quick makes. 
Uh, great if children don't, you know, just need a quick, a quick idea. It's a paper plate. I cut a little bit out at the bottom and I've just stuck a sparkly leaf on. So that makes a quick apple, um, or it could make a quick tomato, depending on what, uh, uh, what, what you feel like. And then this one I've done, I've drawn around my own hands. My hands are a bit big, really. Stuck them both on and put yellow pom-poms on. And that's just onto a, a red plate again. So that makes a super cool strawberry. And then <clears throat> this is a really nice quick carrot to make. I just uh, drew the shape and then I just cut out lots of orange squares and stuck them on and put a bit of sparkly glitter at the glitter paper for the stalk. And then these are, and also see, I, I wouldn't just use those from the stall. I would make those into a number line. You know, put a number on and, and be using it for counting, for adding up, for subtracting. And I, I never use something for just one thing. And then these are super. I made these, I just have a set of paper cups. I was showing them last time. Put a slit in the bottom with a pair of scissors. And then these are just on the lollipop stick. And I've just made a little set of fruit and vegetables. So uh, made a banana, made um, a tomato, and they just I just use the cup to stand. But you could put a number on the cup, wouldn't you? Or you could put a letter on the cup to put a T for tomato, and they've got to match the tomato to the letter T. That sort of thing. Um, and I have there's lots more behind here. I've done an orange, and yeah, you can go on forever really. Make your whole I like, make a whole marketplace of ideas like that. So they're just all very simple and they're all really quick things to make to be honest with you. Um, so and now I'm just going to put the light on. I've gone from being uh, it being really glary earlier on <laughs> to um, not enough light now. Has the sun gone down there Gwen? Hey? Has your sun set already yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, one thing we were wondering is um, if we wanted to look at your crafts, can we go to your Facebook page, The Idea Machine? Because we put yeah. that in the chat box. Yeah, the, um, I've just, this week, or over the weekend, I've made um, <clears throat> galleries now, or groups, of all the photographs from each store. So if you go to my Positive Eye Idea Machine Facebook page and look for the photo um, tab, uh, there, there is a a uh, photograph album or gallery for each stall and all the photographs of everything I've made plus activity there's an activity sheet to go with each stall of extra things you can do everything is there it's up to date as of the grandma picnic I've just put everything in there from the one I did earlier today so everything's there and if you want to watch my videos of the, you know my Facebook ones I'm also doing that it's everything is in that one place Great. Well, I put the link in the chat. And Gwen, did you tell us last time that some of the other boys and girls are sending in photos of what they make? Yeah, I would love to see your pictures. If you send me pictures in, I make a nice, um, <clears throat> I make a nice post like uh, these, and I put them in my gallery. I've made an idea machine art gallery. So any child from anywhere who sends me in a picture, I make a special. I, make, I put their picture on a special post, I write a special message to them, and it goes in the, on the Idea Machine Facebook page, and in the Idea Machine Children's Art Gallery. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I hope that some of the boys and girls that were listening today will try that. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah. We were very inspired by Floor Flower. And so yeah. Maya, she's actually in her class right now in kindergarten Zoom, but she wanted to, me to share a couple of flowers that she made. And oh. so girls at home, if you also made your flowers, maybe you can get them ready and we can um, perhaps let you talk about them. But here's one of them. And we just oh. took a paper plate. What we really liked about this particular white paper plate is around the outside are these little ridges that we felt with our fingers and we thought they felt like little flowers. And in the center of it, she glued a tiny piece of pink square tissue paper that we had used as leftover gift wrap from a birthday a while back. And in it, she put shiny little glittered beads in the shape of flowers and she mounted it against a little green felt. And we were about to glue the popsicle stick on it so that we we're able to poke it in the ground. She made two of them. So here's the second one that she made. Again, 
paper plate. And this one has three turquoise blue felt uh, buttons. And on top of them, again, mounted are glittery flowers on a pink tissue paper. And we'll add a little popsicle stick to that and add it to our little garden. Oh, so amazing. They're beautiful. When you say that, I think the Flora Flower says she thinks they're beautiful. And if you can raise your hand and if you would like to talk, then Leanne will call on you and you can describe your flowers that you made at home with us as well, if you made a flower. Okay, Madeline, I have given you the ability to speak. You can press the space bar to talk. Give her a second, see if she can figure out how to press the space bar. They're nice. Okay, Madeline, I'm going to stop. You're going to have to figure out your technology. Is there um, Miley? Did you want to speak? Hold on, let me see if I can grab your name. Okay, Miley, you have to hit the space bar to be able to talk. Or Millie, M I L E E. I know you wanted to. There you go. We I did not really make a flower, but I do have some stuff in my toy, toy room, so I'll make one um, next. I'll make one later, and then I'll talk about it whenever the next meeting is. That sounds wonderful. We can't wait to see it. Thank you. We'll be back with Gwen again on Wednesday, the 15th of April. So that's not this Wednesday. That's next week on Wednesday. So that will be a good time to bring your flower uh, if, you, if you make one. Awesome. Madeline, you want to try one more time? I'm going to try you one more time, see if we can get you un unmuted. You've got to press the space bar. No, Madeline's having a hard time with that. Okay, that's all the hands raised at the moment. Is there anyone else that did a craft la from last week? Made a paper plate face of Marvin or a Flora flower? Well, you've got some creative ideas coming up with everything that was shared last week and this week. So for next week, boys and girls, if you have some time and you have a paper plate, we would love to see you take a paper plate. One thing that was really fun is you can cut out the inside of the paper plate. And if there was a big hole there, you could put your face through the hole and we would have your face outlined by a flower. So that was one idea that you could have. You could also glue things in the middle of your paper plate. That would be fun. I think that one thing Gwen did this time is cut a triangle from the radius, that's the center of the plate, to the edge of the plate. That would be the radius of the plate. And she cut two little lines to make a triangle or a pie shape. And that was the mouth of the, the fish. And then she took that little triangle and flipped it around to the back of the paper plate to make its tail. So what a fun little math craft idea that you can have with that. I want you to find a plate at home. Hopefully everybody has round plates. And then let's see if you can find the radius of that plate, if it's a paper plate. Cut that right out. Make yourself a pie-shaped piece of pie. And you can make it a big mouth or a tiny sliver of a mouth. And you could paste it right to the back and make its tail. So hopefully we'll see some of your flowers and fish in another week from Wednesday. I know we're ending a little bit early. We'll stick around if there's any questions or if anyone wants to add anything, but otherwise we'll have Gwen back a week from Wednesday, the 15th of April. What Thanks. is tomorrow? I can tell you tomorrow is staying you home. You stay. <laughs> oh, you're ready, Cheryl, go for it. Tomorrow is Tuesday, but we will be back tomorrow at two o'clock East Coast time, and you can figure out the time zone where you are for staying home, how to communicate and act on our wants. And this is presented by Kate 
Katalak Kalak, the Associate Director of College Success from the Perkins School for the Blind. So please join us again tomorrow for this life lesson at, at, uh, at our virtual academy. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, everyone, for coming. A pleasure. Thank you.